November 24, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, question paper 1 1, question 27 to question 40 solved here. Question number 27, which flow diagram describes how auxin affects growth in negative gravitropism? Auxin diffuses down the stem, auxin collects on the lower side of the stem, stem cell elongation is stimulated on the lower side of the stem, the stem grows away from gravity. So negative gravitropism has to be away from gravity. So we're going to talk about away from gravity, so it's either this or this. The light wali kahani nahi hai. So we're not going to talk about the light story. So C and D is wrong. Now we've got to narrow down to A and B. Oxygen, oxygen, sorry, oxygen diffuses down the stem. Oxygen collects on the lower side of the stem. Cell elongation is stimulated on the lower side of the stem. You see, you've got to be thinking of is we place the seedling in such a way that it is the stem is horizontal. So why would it go down? We're not talking about the root. We're talking about negative gravitropism is the stem, not the root. The stem grows against gravity. So oxygen, oxygen diffuses up the stem. This was wrong. So A is correct. Down the stem collects on the lower side. And oxygen collects on the lower side of the stem. And then cell elongation is stimulated on the lower side. So this would, that is why in this situation, the stem is not going to grow down. The stem is going to be growing. So this side is going to be cell elongation is going to be more. So the stem is going to grow upwards. So oxygen collects on the lower side and cell elongation is stimulated. So if this is the stem, it's going to grow upwards. And what is going to happen? There's going to be more cells elongated here. The stem grows away from gravity. Question number 28. The diagram shows some stages during the asexual reproduction of a single celled organism. So what is going to happen? Which row shows the relative amounts of DNA in each of the cells B, W, X, Y, and Z? Now Y and Z we know should have been the same as V. And so they've given you 1 and 2. So if V is 1, so y and z should also be 1. If v is 1, then y and z should only be 1. So that is only the possible in C. So that's why the answer to question number 28 is C. Because you see here now the DNA doubles because the DNA replicates. And then now this cell is, this is one cell, but it's going to divide into two. But this one cell has two. And then two cells form and they're going to be 1, 1. Question number 29, asexual reproduction involves a cell cycle in which the cell divides and then growth and DNA synthesis takes place before the cell is ready to divide again. The diagram shows the stages in one complete cell cycle. This cycle takes 1.75 hours to complete. Using the diagram, which activity in the cycle takes 52.5 minutes in total? So now it says, um, using the diagram, which activity takes 52.5? Now, first of all, 1.75 hours is how many minutes? One hour is 60 minutes and 0.75 is 45 minutes. So it's a total of 105 minutes. And so 52.5 is nearly half of it. Now you can say which one is occupying half the pizza. So the answer is cell growth. You see, it was very easy because you had to calculate 52.5 minutes in total. So the total took 1.7 hours. So one hour is 60 minutes and 0.75 hours means 30 minutes and half an hour and 75, 70 would be 45 minutes. So there is a total of 105 and that would be half of it. I, I did it like this. Maybe you do it some other way. Question number 30, which diagram matches each type of flower with its features? So they've given you insect pollinated and wind pollinated flower and you had to match the correct one with the correct. So I mean, the answer of course is C, but then either you know this or you don't know. Insect pollinated flowers have what? Wind pollinated flowers have large feathery stigma, right? They have anthers loosely attached. And they have wind pollinated will have smooth light pollen. Insect pollinated flower will have a sticky stigma. So this would be correct. And then they would have stamens with short filaments. In the wind pollinated flowers, you know, the 
the there's a pendulous filament and then the anthers are loosely hanging outside so either you know it or you don't know it this is not something which i can there's no sort of uh, ambiguity about it it's very clear you knew this chapter or you didn't know this chapter question number 31 what is the sequence of organs that a sperm cell must pass through so it can fertilize in an uh, fertilize an egg cell basically you see you've got to understand it has to enter the of course, it is deposited in the vagina of the female. So vagina, then cervix, then uterus and oviduct. I would have figured it out like this. And then, of course, sperm duct and urethra because the testes produce it, then goes into the sperm duct and then enters the urethra and then is deposited in the vagina, cervix, uterus and the oviduct. Question number 32. The diagram shows the changes in the thickness of the uterus lining of a woman during her menstrual cycle. At which time is the woman most likely to be fertile? You see, what happens in the menstrual cycle is that in the first five days of the menstrual cycle, the uterus lining is shed. And then it repairs. And then it increases in size. In thickness, sorry. And then it remains thick. And then it prepares to shed again. So that's why at the time when it is the, the thickness is the most and when it is constant, that is the time when the woman is most likely to be fertile. Then question number 33, what is an example of discontinuous variation? Now we've done this a million times and it is blood group is discontinuous variation. The rest are all continuous variation. And then we come to question number 34. Now that's a very tricky question and let's sort of slowly handle it and uh, try to get you all to understand this. Night blindness is an inherited condition and people have unusually poor vision when light levels are low. The diagram shows the inheritance of night blindness in three generations of a family. Couple four and five are expecting their second child, individual seven. What is the probability that individual seven will be a male and will also show night blindness as his phenotype? Now, when doing such a question, you've got to understand is, we're talking about four and five. And they have an affected child female with night blindness six is a female and now they're saying what is the probability that individual seven will be a male and will also show night blindness now if that means what are the parents they are normal and what is the woman with is got to be this the male with night blindness also has to be a small a why because if we don't know if it's a sex link disorder, if it's only then it's only on one chromosome, but okay, we don't do sex link disorders in this syllabus. So that means six is this. Because these are normal, so they have to be heterozygous. One capital A and one small a. Now it says, what is the probability that seven? So you've got to understand what is the probability of AA into AA? So we have this, we have this, we have this, and we have this. So this is a what? 25%. 25% chance of having night blindness. But then having a male or a female is also 50%. So 50% of 25%. 50% of 25%. 50% of 25%, you've got to understand, that's why it was 0.125. 50% of 25%. So it's 0.125. Question number 35, what is essential for natural selection to occur? Now I'm giving you an example of oak trees and they have different length of roots. So they're short length, they're medium length and they are long length. Now when there's drought, <clears throat> when there's drought, you know, some of them are better adapted and some of them will, of course, die. So the short roots will die when there is a lot of drought. So what is essential for natural selection? Number one, variation has to be present. Number two, there's competition. There's competition for water, there's competition for nutrients, there's competition for nitrates in the soil, competition for... So that's why the answer is A. Question number 36, the gene for human insulin production can be inserted into bacterial DNA to enable the industrial production of insulin. What is an advantage of using this type of insulin to treat a patient with diabetes? An offspring of the patient will be protected against, oh no, there is no such thing. The patient's pancreas, no, the patient's pancreas, we are giving them insulin which has been produced by bacterial DNA. 
the insulin gene will be replaced in the patient's DNA. No, that cannot happen. So the only answer is D. The patient will not suffer any side effects from using insulin produced in animals because it's the human insulin gene which was taken and then put into the bacteria and the bacteria is going to make the human insulin. Then question number 37, which row identifies the organisms in a food chain? So producer has to be plant. Producer has to be plant. So these two are wrong. So the answer is D is a plant. Herbivore is the rabbit and dog is the carnivore. Question number 38. Some students set up an experiment to study the decay of leaves in garden soil. They put leaves in bags of different mesh size, sealed them and then buried them. Now the difference in mesh size, mesh means how much is the holes. Now this was the mesh size was 0.1, this was 1 millimeter and this was 5 millimeter. So these are huge 5 millimeter holes in it. Each month, 5 months, each month for 5 months, the bags were dug up and the total percentage loss in mass from the start of the experiment was collected. So if it was 100 grams and then it's 80 grams, so 20 grams was the loss in mass. So the results are shown total percentage loss in mass. So in point 0.1 mesh size, it was 5, then 11, then 16% loss, then 20, and then 31. In the 1 millimeter ones, it was 13, 23, 26, 42, and 48. And in the 5 mesh size, in the first month, there was 21 percentage loss. Then 32, 36, 54, and 60. So in 5 millimeter, there is the largest percentage loss in mass from the start of the experiment. Let's look at all of them at the end, in the end of five months. And it says, what can the students conclude from these results? Naturally, the larger the mesh size, the faster the rate of decay. Decay, decay is dependent on the access to oxygen. Now, this doesn't tell you. We are only going to look at these results. You are saying students conclude from the results. So it's nothing to do with oxygen. The oxygen would also enter through a small mesh size. Decay depends on how much water. There is no such thing as water. Nutrients diffuse away from the leaves more easily when mesh size increases. Why would nutrients de decomposition is what? Breaking down of the large insoluble to small soluble and then that is just going back into the soil. Question number 39. Populations of animals are affected by disease. Numbers of predators. Predators means the animals which are going to the fox eats the rabbits and the supply of food. Which row would lead to the most growth in population size? So naturally, disease should be less and number of predators should be less and supply of food should be more. So that's why the answer is D. B. Decrease in disease, decrease in the number of predators and increase in the supply of food. Last question, question number 40. Which human activity has caused most damage to tropical rainforests? Burning fossil fuel. Why would they burn fossil fuel in a forest? Flooding of land. No. Cutting down trees for industrial use. That is the most damage. The human act. Which human activity has caused most damage? Human activity is cutting down of trees for industrial use. Searching for plants that can be used in medicine, that has not damaged it. You would take just one plant and then study it and then maybe take a few leaves from it or little part of the plant to study if it's got some chemicals which can be used as a medicine. So that completes this uh, paper and thank you very much and best of luck.